In this video, what we're going to talk about is what it makes a prism and how do I find the volume of that prism and exactly what is volume. So let's start with this idea. What is a prism? Well, a prism is a solid. A solid means that this object is going to take up three dimensions in space. It has length, width, and height. And every prism has two parallel and congruent faces called bases. And then my other sides are always going to be uh, parallelograms. Usually those parallelograms are going to be in the shape of a rectangle. And when we name our prisms, we always name it by the shape of the base. So the most important feature of any prism is the base. So identifying the base is what is most important. So let's identify the bases of these two prisms. So again, the base is the two shapes that are going to be congruent and parallel, and they are not the parallelograms. So in this shape, my base is the triangles. In this solid, it's not a shape, it's a solid. So the bases are triangles. That makes this a triangular prism. There we go, prism. And it's triangular because the bases are triangles. And you'll notice the lateral faces or the shapes that aren't, this, the sides that aren't the bases, those are rectangles. The shape next to it, the solid next to it, I keep calling it a shape, it's a solid, is a rectangular prism. Now these are a little harder to identify because uh, since all of the sides uh, are rectangles, what I usually like to do is I'll just pick two. And I am going to go front. Here's one base. And here's the other base. And these bases are rectangles. So this is going to be a rectangular prism. Because prisms are named for the shape of the base. We have a couple more I want to look at. Uh, if we take the, the one on the left and we count the number of sides, we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides on that base. Again, here's the base. One, two, three, four, five, six. And on the back, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sides is a hexagon. If you remember way back in unit, I don't know, what was that, unit four last semester? So this is a hexagonal because hexagon is the noun, hexagonal is the adjective. It is a hexagonal prism. And believe it or not, this one with the circles on it, the circles on the bottom, there's one base. And here's another base. This is a circular prism. This is what we call a circular prism. Circular prism. But I'm going to be honest, nobody anywhere says circular prism. While that's a true statement, no one says circular prism. What we say instead is cylinder. This is a cylinder. No one says circular prism. But every cylinder is a prism, and it's a circular prism because the bases are circles. Now, I said we we're going to find volume. Well, what is volume? Well, volume is the amount of space that a solid occupies. Another way of uh, looking at it, it's how much stuff this cylinder will hold. It is how much stuff I can stick inside this cylinder. And we measure it in cubic dimensions. We measure it in cubic units because it takes three up dimensions, three dimensions. It has length, width, and height length, width, and height, three dimensions, so we measure it in cubic units. And we are asking ourselves, how much stuff, if I was to fill this to the brim, all of this, how much stuff could this cylinder hold? That is the volume. Boom. That is our volume right there. Now, when we find volume, it's a very simple formula, regardless of the shape of our prism, uh, the solid that we're talking about, it's depending on the size of the base. It doesn't matter what the base is. The formula is always the same. Volume 
the amount of space that occupies volume is going to be equal to big B times little h. So big V stands for volume in cubic units. Big B is the area of the base in square units, and h is the height of the prism in units. And that's always the distance between the bases. So if I was to look at this volume, to find volume, the amount of space inside this prism, I need to find big B. Big B is the area of one base. I'm going to find the area of that base, and I will multiply it by the height of the prism. Height does not mean top to bottom. Height means distance between the two bases. And that is how I'm going to find volume. So if I look at this cylinder, it's the same thing. I'm going to find the area of this one circle, just one of the bases, and I am going to multiply it by the height of the prism. So big B is in orange and little h is in green. Big B, little h. And the difference between a capital letter and a lowercase letter, capital case letters are a calculation that we can figure out. That's why it's a capital V for volume, because we are going to figure out volume. Capital B is area. We can figure out area. Lowercase h is a measurement. I don't figure it out. I measure it. Now, there are, big B is going to change depending on the base. Well, if I give you a triangle, we are going to uh, find the area by saying big B, area of the triangle, is one-half base times height. Notice base and height are always perpendicular. So little b, it's a little b because I can measure it. And little h, because again, we can measure it. You multiply those two numbers together, divide it by 2, and you've got the area of that triangle. What if it's a parallelogram? Well, remember, our parallelograms consist of multiple shapes. We could have a square. We could have a rectangle. Or I could have my generic parallelogram, which, if you remember, I like to say p-gram because I have trouble spelling parallelogram. Notice, again, base and height are always perpendicular. Little b, because I can measure it. Notice the right angle. And multiply that by little h, because, again, we can measure it. And please notice every single time, right here, we've got our right angle. Base and height are always, right there is my right angle, my right angle, my right angle. Base and height are always perpendicular. Base is always perpendicular to height, every time. If I have a parallel, I'm sorry, a trapezoid, it even said trapezoid at the top and I couldn't read it. Area of a trapezoid is one half times height times base one plus base two. Uh, the bases are always going to be my parallel sides. So we're going to take the height of the parallelogram, boom, and we're going to take base one. We're going to add the base two base measurements. Oh, I don't want. I've already used that color. I don't want. I don't want that color. No, I've already used. Boom. Sorry about that. There we go. Better. Again, notice height is perpendicular to both bases. So height is perpendicular to base 1, and height is perpendicular to base 2, and base 1 is always parallel to base 2 in a trapezoid. Circles, we just talked about circles in the last unit. Find the area of a circle. We're going to take the radius, and we're going to square it. And then we're going to multiply it by pi. Simple enough. Boom. And that'll give us the area. Capital B, again, it's a capital B because I'm going to calculate it. It's a lowercase r because I can measure it. And then this is kind of new. No one's probably ever talked to you about this one before. If I just give you any regular polygon, it can be any regular shape. I don't care what shape polygon it is. If, but if it's regular, meaning all the sides are the same as each other and all the angles are the same as each other, I can use the formula area, capital B, of any regular polygon is one half perim times perimeter of the polygon times the apothem. Apothem is the distance 
from the center of the polygon to the midpoint of the edge. So little a means apothem. One of my favorite geometry words. I actually had a dog I named apothem, believe it or not. Um, so little a, apothem. Apothem is the distance from the center of my polygon to the uh, midpoint of the side, and it's always at a right angle. So if we were to do this up, the perimeter, once again, it's something I can figure out. I don't measure perimeter. I figure it out. Perimeter is adding up all of the sides. Perimeter, I add up all the sides. And then I am going to multiply that by the length of the apothem, which is from the center to the middle of a side, cutting it in half. And then I'm going to divide all of that by 2. Please take a note that the apothem is always perpendicular to the side. Always. Every time. All right, so if you still have questions for your teachers, please make a note of them and jot them down and talk to your teacher when you see them. And Patriots, of course, we are going to see you when we see you, and we hope you have a good one.